In this lesson, we'll learn about the print and cut process, where designs are printed with any device and then transferred to your GraphTech cutter to be contour cut. This application can be applied to a variety of tasks, such as creating decals, creating full-colored packaging designs, and more. This lesson will cover the process from start to finish when using a roll feed cutter, such as the FC8600 or the CE6000 and 6000 Plus series. This includes how to generate a cut path, the steps required to contour cut the print, how to use layers effectively, and how to create registration marks on your design before sending to print. The software we'll be using in this lesson is Cutting Master 4 with Adobe Illustrator CC 2017. While this may not be the version of Adobe Illustrator you're using, or if you plan to use Corel Draw, you'll find that the steps are similar. We recommend also reviewing the manual or instructional video supplied with your software for further instructions if you are planning to use another software application other than Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. The first step in the print and cut process is to create the cut path. Keep in mind that the cut path should be created after the design is complete and before creating the registration marks. A cut path can be any shape with a thin line and no fill, such as a square, circle, or any other shape such as a square with rounded corners. In cases of making a decal, you may decide that a cut line that contours the graphics design is the best choice. For instance, here we have a design that we can use as a decal. Here we'll create a cut path that contours the design. While we will be using Adobe Illustrator, Corel Draw has similar steps to create the same kind of contour cut line. The first step is to select all of the objects in the design. Click on the Object pull-down menu, hover the mouse over Path, and select Offset Path. When the Offset Path window appears, enter the distance or margin between the graphic and the cut path. By enabling Preview, we can determine how the outline or offset path will look. It looks a little messy right now, but this will be taken care of in a minute. We can click OK to set the path. Next, click on the Window pull-down menu, and make sure the Pathfinder palette is open. Click on the first button, Unite. From here, let's make sure the cut path has no fill, and there is a stroke line. If you need to remove the holes inside the new outline, First, release the compound. Hold the Shift key and click on the outline. Delete the smaller object inside by pressing the Delete key. And finally, ungroup it. The next step is to separate out the cut path from the rest of the design using the Layers palette. First, make sure the Layers palette is open. Next, we'll need two layers one layer that contains objects for printing, and a second layer that contains the cut path. We'll label the current layer Print. Next, create a new layer, and rename the second as Cut. We'll assign the cut path to the cut layer by clicking on the cut path, and dragging this dot to the cut layer. This will assign the cut path to that layer. To check this, we can briefly turn off the print layer, and this should leave the cut path. In order for the cutter to follow the cut path accurately, registration marks have to be placed on the design. Registration marks provide information to the cutter for precise cutting. Once the marks are scanned, the cutter determines aspects such as the starting point, angle, and any distortions. Since Cutting Master 4 is a plug-in module for Adobe Illustrator and Corel Draw, it can create and correctly place registration marks directly within these applications. This is done by clicking on the File pull-down menu. Hover the mouse over Cutting Master 4, and then select Registration Marks. If you are using Corel Draw, click on the Launcher icon button and then select Registration Marks. 
In either case, this same window will appear. At the top, we have the choice of registration mark styles. Let's take a brief look at the different registration mark styles and their purposes. There are essentially two main types of registration marks. Type 1 and Type 2. There is only one simple difference between them. With Type 1, the registration mark corners are facing inward. And with Type 2, the registration mark corners are facing outward. While either will produce the same end result, this choice is generally made depending on the distance between your design and the registration marks, as well as available media space. Segmented registration marks are primarily used for longer cut jobs ranging from 3 to 50 feet, and determine if any bowing occurred in the printing process. The remaining choices determine the number of registration marks used, such as 3 points, and two points. Now that we understand a little more about registration marks, let's examine the different pattern choices that Cutting Master 4 offers on this pull-down list. Here we are given several choices that we just discussed. In this case, using GraphTech 4 point type 2 will give us the best accuracy without sacrificing time to scan the registration marks on the print. You may decide to use three point or even two points depending on the size of the design. Generally, the smaller the design, fewer registration marks are needed. Now that we've chosen our registration marks, there are other settings that affect the look of the registration marks. Units determines whether values are set to inches, millimeters, or centimeters. The other settings are used to change the shape and location of the registration marks. For instance, when placing the registration marks, margin is the distance between the cut path and the registration marks. The values of the registration mark thickness and length can also be adjusted. It is best to increase these values for longer prints or for prints that have been laminated. In either case, increasing these values makes it easier for the marks to be located by the sensor on the cutter. When segmented registration marks type 1 or 2 are chosen, X step becomes active. This is where the distance between each intermediate registration mark can be adjusted. X direction determines the X direction of the design. On the roll feed cutters, the X direction is the direction of the roll media, whereas the Y direction is going from side to side of the cutter. Convert to Rectangle is a useful function that will convert the corners of a selected rectangle to form registration marks around your design. This will be demonstrated in a moment. Relative to Page will place the registration marks on the corners of the page. Once this setting is checked, the margin value will be the spacing between the edge of the page rather than the design. Align Document with Registration Marks aligns the document's origin or zero, 00 point with the lower left registration mark. Use reverse color registration marks places white registration marks within black squares. When selected, a margin value will determine how far the black rectangle spreads out from the white registration marks. Reset simply resets the registration mark settings back to default. Barcode settings generally apply to GraphTech cutters that have a barcode reader but it will print a barcode so that it can later be read by a GraphTech scanner to gain which file to use within the cutter's memory. Use trim marks will use trim marks provided within Adobe Illustrator and Corel Draw. When the settings are to our liking, clicking OK places the marks on the drawing. Let's press Ctrl Z or Command Z on the Mac and start over. Let's draw a rectangle large enough to surround the design but close enough so there is no wasted space. And then open the registration mark window again. Notice this checkbox setting, Convert Rectangle. When enabled, it uses the four corners of the selected rectangle for placing the registration marks. This feature allows us to choose exactly where the registration mark should be placed. The only criterion is that the rectangle has to be selected beforehand. Also, when using this feature, make sure the registration marks do not 
cover the cut path or the design. Click OK to place the registration marks. The rectangle is then converted using each corner of the rectangle as a registration mark point. When placing the registration marks using this method, make sure there is at least a half inch distance between the rectangle and the edges of the sheet. The design is ready for printing, but first we have to disable the cut layer so it doesn't print with the design. When loading the print onto a GraphTech cutter, getting the correct orientation is essential. The easy way to determine this is by opening up the cut plot window for Cutting Master 4. Within Cutting Master 4, there are these red and blue arrows here. These are the same arrows in this little icon of the GraphTech cutter at the top of the window. If we took the icon and placed it next to the job, it would lay out like this. So the corner where the arrows start from would be the home position on the cutter nearest to the control panel. In other words, if we were to overlay the GraphTech cutter on the preview area, it would look like this. Here the right edge of the preview is the right side of the cutter, or the side of the control panel. The pointers at the bottom of the preview window here, reflect the travel direction of the media. Use this orientation within Cutting Master 4 when loading the media onto your cutter. As you use the cutter more and more, this will become apparent. Load the media with the correct orientation. Switch to the condition you plan to use. When sending a print and cut job, the print layer has to be turned off. Otherwise, the software will send the objects that were printed to the cutter. To do this, click on the Layers tab and click on the check mark next to the print layer. Once the Cutting Master 4 options are set, click Send. This message will pop up asking us to move the tool head to the first mark, which we will do. When the job starts, the arm sensor automatically starts searching for the first mark. Once it finds it, it will continue to find the other marks automatically. Once all the marks are found, it will start to cut the media following the adjusted cut path. What's convenient about condition presets is that each preset can be assigned to a layer. To demonstrate how this can be helpful in the print and cut process, we have a design that has both cut and perf cut lines. The registration marks have been placed and the printed media has already been loaded on the GraphTech cutter. On the cutter, Condition 2 has been configured to cut, and Condition 3 has been configured to perf cut. The idea is to have the software control the cutter's conditions so that when the cut line has to be processed, it switches the cutter to Condition 2. And when the perf cut line has to be processed, the cutter will automatically switch to Condition 3. Let's click on the File pull-down menu, hover over Cutting Master 4, and click on Cut Plot. Once the Cutting Master 4 cut plot window opens, we can click on the Layers tab to send them up. To start, in the layers there are three different layers. The Cut layer, the Perf Cut layer, and the Print layer, which has currently been disabled. We can then assign each layer to a condition. In this case, we want the Cut layer to use Condition 2, and the Perf Cut layer to use Condition 3. Take note that the cut layer is in the top position. This is because it has to be processed first. To assign the cut layer to condition 2, we first click on the Enable Driver Options checkbox. Next, making sure the cut layer is highlighted or selected, we click on the preset number 2 plotter condition. As it is selected, the options below confirm that this preset is set to condition 2. Let's select the perf cut layer and assign condition 3 plotter condition to it since it is assigned to condition 3. When the software sends the design to the GraphTech cutter, it will first switch the cutter to condition 2 and process all of the lines for cutting. After all the cut lines are sent, it will switch the cutter to condition 3 and then send all the lines in the perf cut layer. Once again, always pay attention to the stacking order of the layers. 
the uppermost layer will be sent to the cutter first. If you need to switch the order, you can use these green arrows on the side. Let's click Send. The next message is ensuring that we have loaded the media. In this case, we have, so we can press OK. Once the job is sent and the cutter reads the registration marks, the software has the cutter switch automatically to condition 2, configured for the cut, and the cut lines are processed. Once the cut lines are completed, the software then has the cutter switch to condition 3, the condition configured for normal perforated cutting, and those cut lines are processed.